Zach Walls of Gold Derby here with Eugene Garrity. He's the supervising sound editor of Martin Scorsese's The Irishman. Uh, and, you know, Eugene, this movie is uh, quite long and expansive and, uh, you know, it covers several decades uh, in American history. So I just wonder, like, for you, what was the biggest challenge that you faced in bringing this uh, film to the screen? Huh, well, um, the, we did a lot of recording of a lot of cars and, and a lot of uh, material, <laughs> and you just went away, I'm just saying. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm still here, yeah. <laughs> uh, but truthfully, um, in speaking with Thelma early on in the project, uh, and also uh, talking with Marty, they really stressed the idea of intimacy and wanted to strip away what most of us do for a living, you know, what we would normally do to prep for a film. And when I read the script, I understood what they meant, but I really didn't grab, get, get their idea until much later. And I saw it completely that this was a movie that sound <laughs> wanted to get out of the way of. And it was all about um, the raw intimacy of these performances that um, uh, the actors were great at. And, of course, Marty and Thelma edited and directed wonderfully. So the challenge is sort of a reverse idea of, of you know, how do you approach a film as a, uh, you know, in 2019 as a sound person that's been doing it for a number of years and and you have to recalculate your whole idea of of what sound is based on all the work we've all done on many films and marty's films in particular and pr prior to this but it really was honestly a a it's like miles davis playing two notes you know what two notes it's like it, it was all about simplicity and it was really exciting to find that area where they felt comfortable that the, the the performances weren't being overwhelmed by anything extraneous in sound design or mixing. And uh, it's really fun. You know, it is a surprisingly quiet movie, especially for people who are fans of Scorsese's work and, and films like Goodfellas or Casino. You know, I mean, there's a, a certain familiarity with, you know, how those movies are supposed to sound you know and so uh in terms of like finding that quietness um i mean how do you <laughs> how do you go about that since like your natural instincts are to uh, be a little bit more intensive yeah well it's it's interesting you 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 ask that question first off we uh in in the case of myself i start working with thelma and marty two two years i started two years ago uh there were very specific scenes that they wanted um, fleshed out so they could edit with and they could preview their film with. And Marty's like that often. He just wants the sound design started early uh, to help uh, in, in previews or, or in, in screenings, I should say, not previews, in screenings and, and, and with the edit. So I was sent a number of scenes early on, and those are um, were initially more complicated sound design scenes because they didn't involve music initially. And so uh, in particular, the scenes, it's a really great montage at the Schuylkill River mm -hmm. where cars pull up and, and, and Frank throws his, his, his revolvers into the river and, and to get rid of the evidence. And uh, I would say there was about, let me say, about another half dozen scenes that they were very focused on, that they wanted this feeling early on. Uh, the casing of the uh, Cadillac laundromat uh, where Frank is in this beautiful Hudson. And so we recorded that car and I had a dozen vehicles to record early on for the various scenes. Um, uh, uh, but that one in particular was another one. It was like a ballet. Marty was so interested in it being performed and mixed in a in a way that supported this bolero type score and i have to say it's so subtle these are not great works by myself or any or any of our uh, my you know uh, tommy or phil or anybody but 
Marty absolutely loved it, and it was exactly what he wanted. And that, I'd rather that than come up with a more clever idea of some cool sound. It's like, no, this is what he felt supported the drama in this particular scene. And it was so understated. Um, it's just a different way of thinking of things. You know, in the, again, in the modern age, when everything is... Every television show and everything else has phenomenal, great sound. All the, the eyes are dotted. All the foley is perfect, uh, which I totally get. And here we are <laughs> with the, they're doing the opposite. You know, how subtle can you be? Right. Well, I think, you know, having seen the movie multiple times in uh, theaters, um, because it's so quiet and because it's so restrained visually as well, right. when those moments of violence happen, you know, when you hear those gunshots, it really is startling, you know, like it, it really echoes. I mean, was that was that part of the intention for that? I would say yes. Again, everything, I've said this so many times, uh, and you go, uh, Marty is the sound designer. You know, mm. he is, I just help him. It's his ideas, and they fascinate me often because he's he's really open to so many ideas, and and sometimes he's just really simple and in his ideas of what sound should be, and he wants my idea of simplicity, which is a real challenge. It's really in our in this day and age where everything is so sophisticated sound wise, which I totally respect and a part of. Uh, I hope is imagine being given the challenge to be subtle in such a way. And yes, I do think sonically when the gunshots happen or certain things, the dynamics of the movie change dramatically sonically where things get very loud is, is because of how, you know, quiet things are. A perfect example, we worked on this for days, is the cut to the scene in Florida where um, Hoffa, and, and Frank are waiting um, for the little guy to show up. Mm -hmm. We, you have no idea how much time was spent on getting that cut right and the change to subtlety to make it so the tension was already there before this guy shows up. Uh, it's, it, again, I gotta say, this is a different way of approaching film sonically it's not what we normally do in our milieu but it's equally valid valid quite frankly it's legit i mean i was blown away by trying to work towards this uh, this 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 challenge of how do we make that cut so uh angry and subtle and sarcastic and it, it, and laughable at the same time that it really was sort of comedy there. But it was, you, you know, these are things with your ears and most sound designers and sound people, you know, don't really, when you really put to the task of, oh my God, he really, this is really subtle. This is now how to get really subtle and what does subtle mean to him? And, um, Forgive me. It's just it, to me. It's when I think back on it. It's 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 equally as challenging as coming up with the sound of Hugo's automaton or or Life of Pi's. You know, uh, in the flying fish. It's it, those are more obvious. But this is like, well, I'm working with this man, this person who wants this sound, and it's like, how do you get it when it's so difficultly subtle? It's not obvious. Mm -hmm. One of the things about this movie that is uh, unique narratively is that, number one, it, it shows the passage of you know, four decades in this man's life, but it's also told in a nonlinear way. And, you know, you have like three different timelines at any given point <laughs> within the movie. Was that something that you had to think about uh, from your uh, from your work? Not necessarily, to be honest, it's other than the obvious that. We recorded vehicles, say, of course it was a road trip, and so we recorded vehicles from different um, decades. Um, one thing I have to stress, uh, when we went into this project about two and a half years ago, uh, Thelma had explained to me that Marty really wanted to be a road trip, uh, and he wanted the, the idea of traveling on a road to be a significant part of the film. Honestly, that didn't... Um, 
wasn't developed fully for a number of reasons. Uh, I think in in their case, they felt that the performances were so strong that this motif of a road wasn't as necessary it might have been, as it might have been early on. Um, we developed the idea of that with the opening title sequence of road noises and stuff. Uh, but to be honest with you, the, that change of decade wasn't um, uh, a significant thing, uh, um, uh, challenge for sound as it was for just uh, what you would think. You know, we have to get the right cars. You know, we have to record mm -hmm. in the 1950s. You know, and, and I was fortunate to have at my disposal quite a number of vehicles to record, and we did it all. But you'd be surprised. It, you know, even Chucky's um, M Mercury Marquis, which was the car that they're in, uh, that they delivers Hoffa to the house. I mean, you'd be fascinated the conversations Marty and I had over the subtleties of the engine. I mean, none of that is really apparent in the big world of of headline sound design. But I'm still working with a master director, and we're still trying to achieve a sound for his film, and it's just not very obvious. And I don't. I don't mean that in any other way. And that I was fortunate enough to have this other challenge after all these years of, you know, seeing and hearing things and creating sound design concepts. And this was the opposite of that. And believe me, it's it's actually harder. It's much harder. <laughs> You've talked a lot about working with Scorsese, and you have worked with him on several different movies. Um, what is it that he does as a director that helps a person like you achieve your best work? Oh, it's it's wonderful. It's a great question. I often hear so many times how actors talk about how Marty directs them in a way that he's such a a, a privilege to work with because he just understands acting in such a way, so he coaxes performances out of people. Well, that that also goes to to my work and our work in sound, he he he's very demanding, and he's but the challenges he put forth, he's he directs you in a way that's very sensitive to the creative process. That he would not dismiss anything just because he he he's very sensitive to anybody's artistic attempt to do something or creatively he's incredibly sensitive to that and that we're we're really fortunate because it's sort of like you know you don't want to smack the dog you want to give the dog a treat for good behavior right <laughs> so he's he coaxes that out of you in a really positive way and i've been honored to, to be in that situation where he's asked me some very difficult things but he's asked me in a way that i don't get afraid or i don't get intimidated i actually go you know, okay i I, I want to try and, and and get in to what you you're trying to get to, and it's it's a challenge. And it's very encouraging and nurturing. Before I let you go, uh, you won an Oscar for your work on Hugo. What did that recognition mean for you? Oh, thank you um, <laughs> for for mentioning that. I have to quote a really good friend of mine, um, Greg Orloff, who also won an Oscar, and when I asked him. What is this? What is the, what? It, how did this change your life? What am I expecting? He goes, Eugene. He said, uh, it's basically how people look at you. They'll look at you differently, and it is in our business that you know the currency of Hollywood is the Oscar. And as a New Yorker, to get it, it it really does. People look at you differently. You know, it hasn't gotten me any more work. In fact, <laughs> I get less work because they think I'm overpriced. <laughs> but, uh, in our business, it's it was it's a lovely uh, 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 thing that people recognize you for, and it's respected. And I'm totally honored to have one of those. Uh, well, Eugene, thank you so much for your time. You know, I mean, uh, we always uh, think about sound uh, in very propulsive and explosive ways, but it's it's interesting to have a conversation about how it can be used. Um, to quieter effect. Yeah. Um, it, Zach, it's been a fascinating, to be honest with you, this, is, this, 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 this project and this film was unique in its way because I can't, you can't imagine the artistic intent of wonderfully creative people uh, 
in restraint and reserve and still wanting to achieve a certain things in, in it's new to me to be perfectly honest i i expected spider-man movies i expect you know the big sounds that's what we do for a living but this but it's still a, a challenge and it's still a creative uh, uh, and, uh a collaboration with truly great artists yeah. well it's a remarkable movie uh thank you so much for your time congratulations on your work well i i hope i i'm to be honest with you i'm just honored to be help marty uh get what he wanted sonically for his movie because it is the movie's more important than this than than any of the little parts you know it is really yeah. just a really great film and i i i'm glad i didn't get in the way of uh <laughs> ruining it <laughs> <laughs> no not at all <laughs>